All right, in this video, I want to go over a small but important detail about the map state to props function. If you take a look at the cake container component, we have the map state to props function. It receives the Redux state as its parameter, which we can then use as props in our component. What I haven't mentioned though is about the second parameter. The second parameter to map state to props is basically the props that have already been passed to the component. Let me help you understand what that means with an example. I'm going to start off by creating a new file called itemcontainer.js. Within the file, I'm going to use the snippet rfce to create a function component. Now what we want to achieve with this component is to display either the number of cakes or the number of ice creams based on a prop that is passed from the parent container. So this component can be reused for both cakes and ice creams. For the JSX, I'm going to have an h2 tag that says item where we display either the number of cakes or the number of ice creams. Next, we define our map state to props function. And this is the bit we want to focus on. Const map state to props is equal to a function. This function takes two parameters now. The first parameter is the Redux state and the second parameter is the props of the component itself, which by convention is referred to as own props. What this basically tries to convey is that, hey, I know that you're mapping state to component props, but here are a few own props that the component has. You can make use of it if you want to. Now what we are going to do is conditionally assigned the Redux state. For this item container, we are going to pass in a prop called cake from the parent component. So const item state is equal to own props dot cake. Now if that cake prop was passed in, we access state dot cake dot number of cakes. If not, we access state dot ice cream dot number of ice creams. Finally, we return an object where the key is item and the value is item state. What we can now do is render props dot item which refers to the Redux state variable for either the number of cakes or the number of ice creams. Props.item and make sure to pass in props. For this to work though, we need to make sure we connect our store with Redux. So at the top, import connect from React Redux and then while exporting, export default, connect map state to props with item container. And that is it for our item container. I'll now go back to app.js and include the component twice. And a second time item container. For the first one though, I will pass in a prop called cake. Let's save the files and head to the browser. You can clearly see that the first component item count is 10, which refers to the number of cakes, and the second component is 20, which is the number of ice creams. And this is possible because of the cake prop, which we have sent from the parent component. Let's quickly revisit that. In the parent component for the first item container, we pass in cake as a prop. In item container, in map state to props, we check if that cake props 
was sent or not. If it was sent, we access state.cake.number of cakes, in which case our item container behaves like the cake container. If the props was not sent, which is the scenario for our second item container over here, we access the number of ice creams and the item container behaves like ice cream container. Now the scenario here for which we have used own props for might be a bit rare in applications. What is a common use case though is the master detail pattern. From a list of items, when you click on a particular item, you would pass in the item ID as a prop and then fetch the data only for that ID from Redux. So I just wanted to explain about the second parameter. How you would use it in your application completely depends on your requirements. So that is about map state to props. Let's quickly take a look at map dispatch to props in the next video.